Hey there, in this clip, I'm going to show you how to work with your operators so that you can create some complex formulas. Complex formulas are formulas that use the PEMDA rules, so parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Here are the operators or the symbols that you'll use for each one. So parentheses, pretty straightforward, you know those. Exponents, it's probably the one that's new to you. Um, or different than what you may be used to. So that's the little caret. That's above the number six on the keyboard typically. You've got the multiplication symbol, which is above the number eight on the keyboard, the asterisk. Uh, the forward slash, which is where the question mark is. So that's your division. Addition is your plus sign, right? That's above the equal sign on the keyboard. And subtraction, which is um, usually next to the number zero on your keyboard um, up in the top first row. All right, subtraction there. Okay, so I'm going to try to go through this pretty fast. I'm not trying to make this uh, a math class. There will be some math mentioned in here, but um, hopefully it's not too difficult to uh, understand here. And there's an activity here that you're going to do on your own, which, as you can see over here, it's not too different. It's got some different values, but overall it's sort of the same uh, pattern and structure. All right, so just make sure you're tuned it in and following along here. So again, make sure you open this sheet up so that you can pause the video and then follow along as I'm, I'm doing the complex formulas here. Okay, so in this case, we've got a, a, a situation where the problem or the statement says we want to calculate the average rainfall in May. And so we've got four days here with some measurements of rainfall, 3, 3.5, 4, and 5. What we want to do is to get the average rainfall is we want to add up all these numbers here and then divide by how many there are. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and do that very simply. I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, this case out here. I'm going to double click and I'm going to start a formula. So you got to start with an equal sign. So you're going to type an equal sign there. Don't put space or anything after that, just an equal sign. And now, as I said, I want to add up all these numbers. All right, so I want to add up the three. So instead of typing the three, I'm going to use a cell reference. So I want to type the three and then plus the 3.5. So I'm going to click on that one. If the clicking is not working for you, you can just go ahead and type in the address. So this is G, column G, row 4, plus uh, H4, plus I4. And you can see the color matches the cell references that are listed over here. Now, if I just press Enter, that gives me the total amount of rain that fell on all the days. And notice that this is still listed as incomplete because it's not correct yet. All right, I'm going to double click to access that formula again. And now here's where PEMDAS comes in. So hopefully you know this from your math class, but PEMDAS just means it's the order of operation, right? Um, Google Sheets is going to do whatever's in parentheses first, then it's going to find any exponents, do that, then it's going to do the multiplication. If it finds that symbol anywhere, then division, then subtraction, I'm sorry, then addition, and finally subtraction. So right here, it just sees addition. It doesn't see any of those, so once it gets to addition, it does that. But what we're going to do is we need to divide by the number right, of these to get the average. That's how you do average. So at the end, I need to divide by 4 because there's 4 of them. Now, if I do this and press Enter, I get 11.75. Notice that this is still marked as incomplete. And that's because that is wrong. Okay, I'm not using PEMDAS here correctly. So what happens here is the sheet is going to, you know, it's going in order. It's like, oh, are there any parentheses? No. Are there any exponents? No. Are there any multiplications? No. Are there any divisions? Yes. Okay. So let's divide the 5 by the 4, right? So it does that first instead of adding all of these, right? So we want to change that. We want to force it to add all these numbers first and then at the end divide by 4. So very simply, you probably know how to do this. Uh, we're going to surround these values here by parentheses. This way, I'm just going to add these spaces just to make it easier for you to see. This way, if it follows PEMDAS, it's going to find a parentheses and say, oh, I found a set of parentheses. I got to do that first. So then it goes in there and it sees no more parentheses, no exponents, multiplication, division. It sees, oh, I see some pluses. So it adds them up. And then that re results in 15.5. It then continues. And now it looks for exponents. Nope. With this part that's left. Multiplication. Nope. Oh, a division. Yes, I see it. So it'll take the 15.5 and divide it by 4. And so now when I press Enter, I get the correct answer of the average. And you can see I get a mark here of correct. So you want to make sure that you get a message here that says correct. If not, double click and check everything slowly, one character at a time. Make sure you started with the equal sign, 
and then just letter by letter, character by character, check it, okay? Usually there's a typo. Okay, for this next one, we've got a restaurant example. This is a common one. You go out to eat, and you got to pay tax. You know you have to pay tax. We're not even going to talk about tip, but same idea for tip. All right, we want to add up because you and three of your friends went out to eat. You've got three meals or your family. You want to add up all the food to get the subtotal first and then find 11.75% of that because that's the amount that you're going to have to pay extra for tax. All right, and then once you get the tax, you're going to add that to your original subtotal. So the subtotal was just adding them all up. All right, so we're going to do that first. We're going to get the subtotal. So kind of the same as before. Start with an equal sign. I'm going to add that amount plus that amount plus that amount. So those are the three meals. When I press enter, yikes, got to pay $81.50. Now that's just for the subtotal. That doesn't include tax. So we need to go ahead and find tax, right? So the subtotal, we're going to go ahead and surround with parentheses, right? Um, because if we don't, let me just go back. If we don't, if we say we're going to find a tax on that, Okay, when you do a, a, the percentage of something, you have to multiply it by that percentage. So if we do multiply it by 11.75%, now this wouldn't work on paper. On paper, you don't write it like that. You actually have to move the decimal over, but luckily, you got a computer that's doing that for you. So if we do this and we multiply it, this is saying that, okay, if we add all these values up and take 11.75%, I owe $50 in tax. That's outrageous. That's too much. Okay, um, so the correct amount is is gotten by. I'm gonna space this out again. By first telling and using PEMDAS, telling the computer, hey, first add up all of um, the cost of the meals, just the meals. That's eighty-one dollars. Now multiply that by eleven point seventy-five percent. When I press enter, there we go. That means we've got to pay $9.57 as tax, all right? So now we know the tax, but now we have to add that back to the original, what was it, like $80? So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to add all of this that we have so far, So because right now this is just the, the tax, let me get rid of some spaces. We're gonna add it back to the subtotal, okay? So now I'm gonna use parentheses again. So this is one, um, Giant formula, right? So this is going to compute the tax. So this whole thing represents my entire tax. I'll press enter just to be sure. There, it's still good. All right, make sure you do that also. Otherwise, you're going to mess something up. Make sure you're little pieces. All right. So now we got the tax. Now we want to add it back into the subtotal. Well, we already did that. So let's just say plus this amount because we know this is the subtotal. So that's the original, just the food with no tax. So I'm going to say plus, let's space that out, that, all right? So this first part finds the tax, and now that we got the tax, which is 9.7625, we're going to add it to the original cost of just the meals, which is the 81, all right? So now when I press enter, there I go. I got my total. That's how much this meal is going to cost, right? And so now it's marked as correct. All right, moving on. For the area of a circle, okay, you use the formula pi r squared. Okay, you need to make sure you're practicing using exponents here. That's the key piece, so make sure you understand that. This is going to be very straightforward. So again, pi r squared. We're just going to say we're in a round. We're going to say pi is 3.14. Okay, again, hopefully this is something you've already covered in math. That's just a constant, all right? So 3.14, that's what pi stands for. Radius, so multiplied by radius. Radius is 23, so that's in cell C of F14. And now I want to raise it to the power of 2. Now what I don't want you to do is do not do this. This is correct mathematically, but don't do that. Okay? So that's correct, but it's marking it incomplete because I'm not using the exponents operator. So to do that, we're going to use the exponents operator. Remember that's the little caret. We're going to raise it to the power of 2. Okay? Um, and then we press enter, and we get correct. Now, this is correct because... PEM does, it goes in order. Are there parentheses? No. Is there an exponent? Yes. So it's going to do that first. And then the answer, 529, it's going to multiply by 3.14. And that's how it gets the correct answer. All right, we're on to the last one here. 
So for this one, we need a discount of 25%. How many times they go to the store and they tell you, hey, you can buy something, it's on sale, 25% off or whatever percent off. Well, this is how you do that, all right? Um, we've got an original price of $57.50, right? We want to multiply this by 25%, kind of like over here. And once we get that percentage, we want to subtract it from the original price. All right, so we're going to start first with an equal sign. Our original price is uh, inside of F19, and we're going to multiply that by the 25%. Okay, so when I press enter, that's the amount that we're going to get as a discount. That's how much we're going to subtract. Well, we got to subtract this from the original 57.5, right? So I'm going to double click, and I'm going to put this around. I'm sorry, I'm going to surround that with parentheses because I want the computer to do that first. And now I need to subtract this from the original price. Now, a mistake some people make is they're like, okay, I'm going to subtract it from the original price. And they type that. However, when you press enter, we get a negative. That's wrong. And that's because you subtracted, you know, the discount, which is a smaller number, from the bigger number. That's not what we want. We want to reverse that. So we'll actually put it to the front. So over here. I'm going to say find F19, which is the original price. And from that big price, subtract this discount. All right. Now when I press enter, it's correct. As you can see, all of them are green. All right. So if I went too fast, hopefully you're able to rewind there, of course, because this is a video and see where you may have made a mistake. And once you got the hang of that, go ahead and attempt these on your own. Again, kind of similar. So make sure if you get stuck, go back and check to see how you did these. Uh, these should all turn green uh, when you do them complete. That way you know if you um, set them up correctly. All right, that's it. Good luck. Take care of the sheet that's over here that's on your own.